This is the Las Vegas Sphere, a gigantic ball of screens which is right next to the track at turn seven. That's not going to be distracting, or maybe it will be, because Sky Sports F1 tweeted this. What do you think should be on the Sphere during the Vegas Grand Prix? And obviously, the memes were fire. We've got Max Verstappen being a window licker. <laughs> That's pretty funny. The Fernando Alonso forehead. Toto Wolf looking like a nonce. Team LH went with hashtag Red Bull Cheats as per. It's been two years. Stop it. We've got Nicholas Latifi, Logan Sargent, Fernando Alonso having an existential crisis. The Lance Stroll meme from the Monaco Grand Prix when the TV director committed a crime against humanity. And then multiple people suggested the scene from Drive to Survive where Toto Wolff had a mental breakdown. You've got a problem. Change your fucking car. And you change your car because Checo has been saying the car all of these are great suggestions, but then I chimed in with my idea, which is Gorlock the Destroyer. <laughs> if if you don't know who Gorlock the Destroyer is, it's this fat trans woman. Is it a woman or is it a man? I think it's both. This human mudslide who goes on every single podcast talking about how she can shag whichever man she wants. Babe. Your man is probably in my fucking DMs and I could have had him as a body literally last week if I wanted to. Imagine being that arrogant when you have the body composition of a wedding cake. And somehow the Las Vegas sphere makes her head look less round. <laughs> Right, listen, listen, we're going to be silly today because the Las Vegas Grand Prix is clearly a shit show and I refuse to take it seriously. So if Formula One does not put the trans wedding cake on the sphere, then I will be very disappointed. I do have one more suggestion. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the freaking frogs gay. Do you understand that? Turn, turn the, the freaking frogs frog. gay. Boom, boom, serious crap. Gay. Frogs freaking frogs. Boom. It's not funny. I'm gonna say it real slow for you. Gay frogs! <laughs> right, let's stop dicking about with the bloody sphere and get to the Formula One business. Oh yeah! There's a Formula One race on this weekend. You might not have noticed with all of the PR stunts and the cringy social media content and all of the memes about the track looking like an upside down pig. In fact, let's start with the pig, shall we? This is the Las Vegas Formula One track and it cost $500 million to create. That's a lot of guacamole. And most of that guacamole was spent over here on the start finish line. This little square was actually purchased by Formula One themselves for $240 million. And then they've slapped a big fat complex on it so they can charge rich idiots £12,200 per ticket. That does sound like a lot of money until you find out that the ticket price includes something called a recovery brunch. What the fuck is a recovery brunch? Excellent, Excellent question. question. Recover in style from the most highly anticipated race on the 2023 calendar. Taking place in the brand new sphere or as we have just established the Gorlock Dome. Gorlock Dome. I love the Gorlock Dome so much. Fun! I've taken, I've done way too much sugar today. Head in the game. You'll indulge in brunch bites, a full bar service, blah, 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 blah. Silent meditation, aerial champagne pause, wellness shots, and more. So, once the cars fly past all of the people who were stupid enough to buy the paddock tickets, they arrive at the first two corners. A sweeping left-right combination leading onto the back straight. DRS wide open, slipstream down to a 90-degree right-hander and into the trans wedding cake section. Now, you can't see it from this angle because Gorlock's fat head is in the way, but right here is a chicane, and this is what the drivers will have to navigate through whilst not getting distracted by the sphere. Once the driver have navigated through the trans wedding cake chicane, there's another left-hander before a long winding run behind the Venetian Hotel complex. Now, this bridge right here has been the center point of some controversy because Formula One has put up screens on the bridge to deliberately obstruct the view of the Commonwealth pigs who haven't paid for a ticket. And the Commonwealth pigs are not happy about it. Work being done on all those pedestrian bridges to block the race view does not have many fans. It's even getting very 
vandalized. So we are on the pedestrian bridge over Sands that connects the Venetian to the wind. And this bridge in particular has one of the best views of the sphere. You can see it out right here through the glass. But F1 has put up this film. Some people do not like it and people have come by. They've actually ripped it off so they can continue to get a clear view. Yes, fight the power. People are vandalizing the screens because they want to see the Gorlock Dome. Unfortunately, Formula One has responded by putting up even more screens and also metal gates to stop people ripping down the screens. They say it's for safety purposes, and by safety, they mean capitalism. So after the cars go under the capitalism bridge, it's another 90 degree corner onto the main straight. 1.9 kilometers, making it the second longest straight on the Formula One calendar, giving the drivers plenty of time to take taking the iconic landmarks of Las Vegas. For example, Treasure Island, where a man murdered his girlfriend, leaving her dead body in the hotel room, and then threw himself off the top of the Hoover Dam. Fun! Then we have the Mirage Hotel and Resort, which is just a front for a dolphin concentration camp. According to dolphinproject.com, 17 dolphins have died at the Mirage, including four deaths in the last 10 months. The facility has one of the worst records for dolphin deaths in the United States. Fun. And then we've got Caesar's Palace. This is where Mike Tyson punched Alan in the hangover for stealing his tiger. It was also proven in the hangover that this is not Caesar's actual palace. You probably get this a lot. This isn't the real Caesar's Palace, is it? What do you mean? D did, um, did Caesar live here? Um, no. I don't think so. So, once the cars fly past the Dolphin Holocaust and the fake Caesar's Palace, they get to the Bellagio Fountains, where, unfortunately, there was some tragic news. Well, we begin with a developing story. A federal investigation will be opened into the death of a man working at the Bellagio Fountains. Several published reports say the man was working on the grandstand for the upcoming Formula One race in Las Vegas. Investigators said Antonio was working on the ground level of the grandstands on the north side of the fountains. He was using an electric circular saw and was attempting to make a cut. However, police said as he cut, Antonio hit a vertical piece of metal which caused the saw to bounce off and hit Antonio in the neck. This reminds me of when they were building the Miami Grand Prix track a couple of years ago. Two construction workers were severely burned and airlifted to hospital. Listen, it's not proper capitalism unless minimum wage workers get injured and die. Grow up. So we've got a crime scene, a dolphin concentration camp, a fake Caesar's Palace, more death, and then the final corner. Another boring left-hand sequence of corners onto the pit straight and back towards all the rich morons who paid £12,200 to drink wellness shots and do silent meditation. And that concludes my unofficial tour of the Las Vegas Grand Prix upside down pig. So there's a lot of pressure on Formula One this weekend, and not just because they spent $500 million building the upside down pig and spent the last two years hyping it up, but also because we're coming off the back of a triple header. And in each one of these races, some form of shite hit the fan. At the US Grand Prix, Lewis Hamilton was chasing down Max Verstappen for the win and crossed the line barely two seconds behind him before getting disqualified for an illegal plankware infringement. As you can imagine, Team LH didn't take that too well. Ah! Wow. Then, at the next race in Mexico, Kevin Magnussen fucked it into the barriers, bringing out the red flag. Sushi Tanoda kamikaze himself into the side of Oscar Piastri, and Sergio Perez ended his career by twatting himself out of the race at the first corner. As you can imagine, the Perez fans didn't take that too well. A lot of booing, a lot of booing. Guys, I mean, honestly, I had nowhere to go, so I was a bit in between the, the two Red Bulls. Wow. And then at the last race in Brazil, Lance Stroll qualified third on the grid after his father manipulated the weather for the second time this season. Remember how I explained a few videos ago that Lawrence Stroll is pouring chemicals into the atmosphere to manipulate the weather to benefit Aston Martin? And the last time he did that was to get the Imola Grand Prix cancelled so Mercedes couldn't introduce their upgrades until the Monaco Grand Prix. Yeah, well, he did that again. Halfway through the final part of qualifying in Brazil, the clouds turned black and the pit of hell opened up in the sky. There was a 
a video of a caterpillar getting ripped off the top of the turn four grandstand. The entire roof collapsed at the final corner grandstand, almost decapitating a photographer, and even worse, the window licker outqualified Fernando Alonso. Then on Sunday, Martin Brundle interviewed Machine Gun Kelly and gave everybody watching a cringe induced aneurysm. Then Ferrari did the most Ferrari thing ever when Charles Leclerc fucked it into the barriers on the formation lap after the hydraulics failed on his car. Oh dear, that's Charles Leclerc and he's gone off already and into the barriers on the formation lap. No, I lost the hydraulics. I lost the hydraulics. Why the f am I so unlucky? Why the f am I so unlucky? You know what's funny about that, aside from the obvious, is the marshals took a picture with his Ferrari behind the barriers. And if all of the marshals are in the shot, then who took the picture? R.I.P. Charles. Die! Wow. Then when the race started, half the field shat themselves, bringing out the red flag. Lando Norris had a run on Max Verstappen for the lead of the race, which was adorable. But the best moment of the race, and maybe the entire season, was Fernando Alonso holding off Sergio Perez for the final step of the podium. Fernando used his big, beautiful brain by taking unorthodox racing lines through the final corner, making it difficult for Perez to launch an attack. And he did this for 37 laps. But then, with two laps to go, Perez finally got him into the first quarter, and that should have been it because the Red Bull is way faster than the Aston Martin. There was only one lap to go, making a comeback almost impossible. And then Fernando said, Hold my cock. Here we go. Is there a chance to respond for Fernando Alonso? Forces a defensive move. That's not what Perez needs. If he goes off the racing line, he could be vulnerable to four. Alonso is going to get the run down to turn number four. This is going to be super aggressive between the two of them. Alonso's fought his way back through. What a move for Alonso. On the last lap, Fernando Alonso across the line. He gets close. He just hangs on. In a superb finish to the line, it was decided for third place by 53 thousandths of a second. Oh, it's beautiful. We got a final lap overtake and then a drag race to the line with a photo finish. And that's what Las Vegas has to compete with. Formula One at its finest. So will the Las Vegas Grand Prix live up to all of the hype? Who cares? Because the Mirage Hotel is running a dolphin concentration camp, Caesar's Palace is not Caesar's actual palace, and the government is pouring chemicals into the water to turn the frogs gay. Thank you and goodbye. Turn the friggin' frogs gay!